Bulletproof pet doors, bendable gaming monitors, exosuits, cool new cars including a land aircraft carrier, and some awesome new tech for us Mac users. CES 2025 has just ended and although I could honestly make this video two hours long, I condensed it down in some of the best and coolest things I saw. Also big thanks to EcoFlow for sponsoring part of this video but more on that later. This is a bendable gaming monitor from LG. That's right, it literally switches between a flat and a curved setting. It's also a 4K 45 inch OLED panel with USB-C built in for laptop connectivity. Now image quality looks amazing, uh, just as good as the LG OLED gaming monitors I've reviewed previously, but honestly I'm struggling to think of why someone would want to switch between flat and curved, but hey, uh, I guess if you want to, now you can. Speaking of monitors, I headed over to the ASUS booth next and saw a brand new 6K resolution 32 inch ProArt monitor specifically designed for Macs. Long story short, I want one. Uh, it also comes with Thunderbolt 4 connectivity, so you can connect MacBooks with a single cable. Now this new monitor is interesting to me because pretty much the only option we've had up until now is the super expensive Pro Display XDR that costs $5,000. I also got my hands on the new and already controversial RTX 5090 cards. Now in general, they are a bit smaller than the previous generations. Uh, most of them are two slot now instead of three, but I'm more interested in benchmarking the laptop version's performance in the new gaming laptops being released this year and comparing them to the M4 Max MacBook Pros head to head. I think the MacBook will get slaughtered in gaming, but for everything else, I think it might actually be a very interesting comparison. Side note, look at this absolute monster of a Wi-Fi router, the latest ROG Rapture. It's huge, way bigger than my hand, but the specs and connectivity options are pretty interesting, including 10 gigabit ethernet ports, quad-core CPU, and Wi-Fi 7. Now, for those of you that like affordable keyboards, Keychron has a few new models this year including the QMAX series with a high quality CNC aluminium body, double shot PBT keycaps and a 1000 Hz polling rate for gaming. They've also recently entered the gaming keyboard space with magnetic switch keyboards, shortcut buttons and I believe this brand is actually a sub brand from Keychron called Limo Key. But check this out, look familiar? My first thought was it's a Logitech MX Master keyboard, but no, this is a Keychron B Pro series keyboard instead. Now Keychron claims it's less than half the price of the equivalent MX Master, and in terms of build quality and typing experience and just holding it in my hand, it was honestly really similar. However, instead of the proprietary Logi Options software on the MX Master, the Keychron uses ZMK, which is open source, so you're not locked into a specific brand like you are with Logitech. Now, if you couldn't already tell by my accent, I am Australian, so I'm genetically gifted with the ability to sniff out a good steak from a distance. And that smell was coming from Drio's Smart Kitchen line of products. Now, I'm always a sucker for kitchen appliances. I really don't like cooking. Uh, this particular one is the Chef Maker. It's a combi fryer that utilizes AI to cook food perfectly. Yes, I know AI is kind of a buzzword now, but they demoed cooking a steak, and this thermometer actually goes into the thickest part of the steak. Uh, you select cooking options on the screen, and boom, perfectly cooked sous vide steak it also tastes really good and obviously required almost zero input from me. They also have something called a barista maker which makes cafe quality milk froth and all you need to do is just pour milk in, select how you like it and the milk is automatically heated and frothed perfectly via an impeller blade. I can see this being useful for people who maybe don't have a coffee machine and just do instant coffee or pod coffee but also really like their milk. Uh, you know, froth and velvety and heated up as well. Also, apparently Drio is the number one fan brand in the US, and I got to try their wind motion simulator racing experience, which is two of their fans hooked up so that it simulates the charging levels of wind blowing while accelerating or slowing down. Now, these ones are the Polyfan product line. Uh, one of them actually tracks you around the room, and this is the two-in-one tower fan and heater, which switches from cooling to heating in just two seconds, and is a fraction of the price of the Dyson equivalent. My cat also gave me explicit instructions to buy her something, and there were a few pet-related booths at CES this year, but this one from a company called Pawport really caught my eye. It's a pet door, but 
over-engineered and on steroids. They claim it's bulletproof and even shot some 9mm and buckshot rounds at it to prove it. And they even had a demo of dropping a sledgehammer into the doors over a thousand times and they still didn't break. It's built from solid steel and aircraft grade aluminium. Uh, it's controlled by an app or there's physical buttons on the top. You can change the RGB colors, it's weather and pest proof and it automatically opens and closes via an NFC tag you can attach to your pet's collar. It's also really easy to install and just slides over existing pet door installations with minimal work required. Heading over to the EcoFlow booth, they've got a lot of very cool new products, including their Oasis Smart Energy Management software platform. Now, EcoFlow told me it's kind of like a control center for your home's power needs. Oasis uses AI and integrates with your entire home to save you money on power bills, uh, improve energy efficiency and manage your energy consumption. There's a dashboard and you can customize widgets to quickly show you important information. Or you can go deeper, for example, real-time monitoring of solar generation or even create custom home power automations. They also had their newly released rapid magnetic power banks with a kickstand, MagSafe compatibility and app connectivity. So you can set charge and discharge limits, which I found pretty cool, uh, and also check battery health or even use the fine my feature in case you misplace it. Now, while I was recording this footage, some of the EcoFlow team were powering a few coffee machines from the Delta Pro 3 battery, which has an absolutely insane 2,600 watt output capacity to power kettles, ovens, or even hair dryers. Things that are traditionally very high power draw appliances. And of course, I had to try on the EcoFlow power hat, which uses little solar panels to charge a 4,000 milliamp hour battery while also being sun safe. Might actually pick up one of these for the Australian summer. I mean, we've got plenty of sun. And I absolutely loved the Glacier portable refrigerator and ice maker, and am seriously thinking of picking one up. Thanks again to EcoFlow for supporting my channel and supporting this part of the video. Now we've seen robot lawnmowers before, but Yabo claims they have an industry first modular robot that can not only mow, but can be changed into a leaf blower, snow blower, or used as a cart to carry things around among other things. Yes, you do have to manually change over the modular sections yourself. It's not an automatic process, but this whole process only takes about 30 seconds and it's not too difficult and saves you having to have like four different robots at once. The robot returns to its dock to charge automatically. And here's a look at some of the different attachment options. Next up, I visited the Dreamy booth because I bought their X40 Ultra Robot Vacuum last year and I wanted to see how the new X50 compares. Uh, it now jumps up to six centimeters over different floor levels. Uh, Dreamy calls this feature Pro Leap and I guess I can see it being useful for those who have houses with different levels that may have prevented you from buying a robot vacuum in the past. There's also a model with a robotic arm that extends out to move things in its way like socks or pet toys uh, so that it can clean and mop underneath them. And if you hate cleaning windows or you've got really tall windows that are hard to clean, Dreamy's got you covered there too, but you still have to manually place it onto the individual windows you need cleaned. There were also a ton of cool cars and other automotive technology on display. This is the Xpeng Aerot and it's a land aircraft carrier modular flying car. The air module is kind of like a helicopter but has six rotors and seats two passengers. It's electric and has either manual or autonomous driving modes. It's also apparently super simple to use and you can learn how to fly it in just five minutes. When it lands, it folds up into a compact box shape so that it can get this fit into the back of what they call the ground mothership. Absolutely insane stuff. This is obviously not available for purchase right now, but if it ever goes into production, I imagine the price tag is going to be very high. And that last part is kind of the same story for most of the concept vehicles I saw at CES. There were a lot of really cool designs and ideas, but to get them out of the conceptual stage and actually into the hands of consumers and driving on the road is just another story altogether. Honda also debuted their prototype electric zero series SUV and saloon, which honestly, out of all the cars I saw, probably has the most chance of becoming a vehicle you can actually buy. Honda claims they'll start production in 2026, and these just look way more futuristic than Tesla's refreshed 2024 and 2025 Model 3 and Model Y. So I'm interested to see how they compare in features, but more importantly, price. Something that is not a concept though is Cat Command from Cat. 
This guy is currently remote piloting a digger that is 450 miles away. The crazy thing is there's only 130 milliseconds of latency or ping, which is better than I get in some online games connecting to servers in my own state. You can set avoidance zones so whatever heavy machinery you're piloting cannot go out of bounds or accidentally knock into a power pole or something. It's also fairly simple to use, they even had random members of the audience try it out. Also, shout out to all the robotics companies out there making life easier for people. This is a really exciting space because we've seen all of these exosuits and things before, but they're very rapidly becoming more affordable and more accessible for everyday people. And this is a company called ULS Robotics, and they have different exosuits for different tasks, like an upper limb exoskeleton to help tradesmen put less strain on their back and shoulders, or the lumbar exoskeleton to help people pick up heavy things. There was even someone in the crowd who needs a wheelchair, and he was able to walk unattended assisted with the exoskeleton, which was honestly amazing to see, and I'm excited to see what the future holds for exosuit tech. Overall, CES 2025 was really interesting. Sure, it was my first ever CES, so I'm kind of biased, but I really enjoyed seeing some of this cutting edge tech being used in real life applications and also helping people with their everyday lives. So see you at CES 2026.